Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt. So this is one of my favorite posters. It's about mitochondrial function and ATP production, which is energy in the mitochondria. I'm going to explain this to you. It's going to be really easy to understand. It's absolutely fascinating. Uh, the first thing I want to do is show you that this is a map, right? It's not a bunch of words and paragraphs and chapters in a book that have no pictures. This is one big picture and it's a map and you follow it. And as you follow through, then you can read the words. And as you gather up words that you understand, it'll make more and more sense. And if there's some words you don't understand, you just have to look it up. But let's just, we'll just go over this. It's very easy. So just follow me on this. Just bear with me. And I'll read the words. I know it might be hard to see or whatever, but I'm going to, don't worry, I'll, I'll speak it. So the first part up here we got, this says glucose and this is pyruvate. So between glucose and pyruvate is a process called glycolysis, which means turning sugar into a fuel. Now, all the medical textbooks, nutrition textbooks for 100 years have been saying that glycolysis is the backbone of human physiology. And that's not true. Okay, just putting it out there. They teach it right now in grade school and college and et cetera that this is the most important thing and it's completely, absolutely not true. So now over here, we have other sources of food or fuel, I should say food, and that could be fat and it could be um, ketones from fat or protein. So yeah, protein is not really a good source of fuel, but it's very minor. And But fat though, is a very excellent source of, of uh, fuel. So here we have in the far left, it says food gets converted to fuel and the fuel says, it says acetyl-CoA, that's this. So we went from glucose to pyruvate and acetyl-CoA. Just bear with me. And then the fuel becomes energy, like fire. Okay, fire, energy. And that has to do with making ATP, which is at the very end of this, of this um, process right here. Okay, the process goes like this. Circle, and then over like that. Okay, now this is the, called the Krebs cycle, and this is called electron transport chain. Don't worry, we'll go over it. It'll be easy. All right, so this pyruvate needs to cross through this blue line. There's a very faint blue line right there, and there's another one right here. So the mitochondrial outer membrane is this one, and the mitochondrial inner membrane is this one. So every cell is loaded with mitochondria, anywhere from 10, 2,000 to 10,000 mitochondria. Some have 20, some have like 3 million, right? Some rare nerve cells have millions of mitochondria, but most cells have anywhere from two to 10,000 mitochondria. And the volume of the cell is primarily mitochondria. And I'm sure you've heard of the nucleus and I'm sure you've heard of a bunch of other things inside the cell. Well, it's all about the mitochondria. And so this pyruvate needs to slip between or through the two membranes, through this one and this one. And as it does that, it goes through a conversion and it becomes acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the cash money. Once you have that, you're golden. And then you can continue all of this and all of this and have great energy. As long as these two things are working well, which we'll talk about that in a second too, Okay, so now let's say that this barrier right here, this membrane, is uh, not very intelligent or it's toxic. And this membrane won't allow the pyruvate through. So now you have a, a problem in that you end up with too much pyruvate. And so then it shuttles to the right and it becomes lactate. Lactate is a waste product. It's also a fuel because lactate can then be converted back into pyruvate. Okay, but let's say you have excess lactate, and that could be come, coming from eating too much sugar. And then you get lactic acidosis. This is the death cycle, also known as cachexia, also known as sugar acidosis, also known as five other terms, studied and renamed over the decades because it's dangerous and you want to avoid this. Now, this is okay if you're an athlete and you just sprinted 400 meters, and you're out of breath and your muscles are achy and sore, your pulse is up, your blood pressure is up, you're gasping for air, 
your body's trying to get in more oxygen so that it can go from here back into here. But there's people who are toxic with mold, they're toxic with fructose, their liver doesn't work well, they got heart disease, they got cancer, and they're panting, and their muscles are sore, they're diagnosed with fibromyalgia, or chronic fatigue, or any other host of diseases, because they are out of oxygen, their blood is toxic, they are anoxic, meaning not enough oxygen or no oxygen, and they end up doing this all the time. Again, the death cycle, the lactic acid cycle right here, the Cori cycle, C-O-R-I. There's a bunch of different names for it. So the point is, keep the pyruvate going through to here, or you can bypass this whole system of glycolysis and pyruvate, and just bypass that by getting into ketosis. That means you're here, and in two steps, you're here. You don't have to worry about all the waste products from glycolysis, the sugar ups and downs, hypoglycemia, diabetes, uh, fatty liver disease, etc., etc. Just do ketosis, boom, like that. Now, some people have hard, a hard time with that, but it's a goal. If you have a hard time getting into ketosis, it's because you've been doing something wrong for a few decades, eating the wrong diet, maybe working in a job that's toxic, and now your body needs a little bit more coaching with the diet and other um, exercises, if you will, to get ketosis going. Okay, so now you're in the Krebs cycle. You're right in here. And you have acetyl-CoA, whether you got it from this or from this, you have acetyl-CoA. And you go through this cycle right here. And the purpose of the cycle is to release electrons and hydrogen from acetyl-CoA and really citrate. So acetyl-CoA is a very small molecule. I think it's got three carbons. And then oxaloacetate, again, that's got like, I think two carbons. Don't quote me on that. But you combine these two things together, and now you have citrate, which is a large carbon chain. It's this plus this equals citrate. And so this Krebs cycle is also known as a citric acid cycle or citrate cycle. So as citrate is broken down, it releases water. It rele there's some carbons that are broken off. You can get some ATP right here. You get these, There's these two carrier molecules. One's called NADH. The other one's called FADH2. Those two carrier molecules bring the electrons and hydrogen down into the electron transport chain. So at the end of this cycle, this molecule gets smaller and smaller and it discharges its energy and it loses its, its, uh, its, its size. And then it, it becomes oxaloacetate and it combines with acetyl-CoA and boom, there you go again. It's citrate all over again. And you just keep repeating that. So you get these products from here and they go into the electron transport chain. Now let's talk about this. This is fun. It goes right along the membrane. You see this blue line right here. The bigger, thicker blue line goes here and across. And this chain is in this membrane. So we have one, two, three, four. And this one's not labeled, but, but we can call that number five. And this, so this is called cytochrome one, cytochrome two, cytochrome three, cytochrome four. And there's things that happen along this way, but it comes down to two actions. The first action is electrons go this way. So what happens when electrons move? That's electricity. Electrons move in the wires that feed your home electricity. And so when you have that motion, then hydrogen goes from here down. So you have electricity going that way, hydrogen going this way. Okay, the electricity allows the hydrogen go to, to go down. So you can see there's an H here. That's hydrogen. I don't know if you can't read it, but I'm pointing it to you. And there's an H here and an H here. And there's an arrow that goes through complex four or cytochrome four. There's an arrow that goes through cytochrome three. There's an arrow that goes through cytochrome one. And now you have a collection of hydrogens between the two barriers. Okay, again, here's the thick barrier. And down here is that thin barrier. It goes all the way like this. So it demonstrates that there's this collection of hydrogen all in here. And the, the mitochondria are doing that. It's called mass action kinetics. You just have a lot of movement of a lot of things. And they compile and then they squirt out. They squirt this way up through this. It's called the ATP synthase. This is a nanomotor and it spins 9,000 times every minute. And one hydrogen will go up for one cycle 
and one cycle gives you one ATP. What is ATP? Adenosine triphosphate. Tri means three. Phosphate stands for phosphorus. If you have phosphorus in your hand, in the presence of oxygen, it glows. It's fire energy. Napalm is made from phosphorus. Phos means light. Pho means light from within. Pharaohs are like the gods of light. So there's this um, etymology of that word, the, the origins of that word, pho, are all about light. So phosphorus is fire energy. So when you have a lot of hydrogen, then you get a lot of energy because you need the hydrogen here. And when you have a lot of electrons, again, you get a lot of energy because you need the electrons here. Okay, so now the major components of the body are three things, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Hydrogen is the proton. Those three elements are 96.6% .6 of your body. And then you have the electrons. And if you have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen loaded with electrons, tons of electrons, it's, it's like a superfood. It's actually a, carbon, it's a carbohydrate. It's the simplest nutrition is CHO, carbohydrate plus electrons. Now, there, are such, there is such a thing as CHO with hardly any electrons. It's like dead sugar, right? So you want, this is why people want whole food uh, organic vegetables because it's a CHO with lots of electrons and photons from the sun because it was raised in your garden. Now, the whole purpose of holistic healthcare is to load your body up with these ingredients I'm talking about. And electrons in particular is a very intriguing subject and people are doing a lot of things to gather electrons into the body. For example, sun tanning can do it. Grounding yourself, meaning walking on the soil, barefoot, for example, that can do it. Using a laser, like a red light, cold laser, that can increase your electrons. Exercise, and of course, whole foods, including good meat and vegetables. This box right here talks about where do you get stuck? And it says statin drugs that can damage this process and especially with CoQ10, right here, it's a little tiny truck. And right here, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and right here. These two trucks, it says CoQ10 right on them. And they carry electrons and hydrogen from cytochrome 1 to 3 and from 2 to 3. Statin drugs block the cells from making CoQ10. Loss of CoQ10 paralyzes the electron transport chain causing a cellular deficiency in ATP. Decreased ATP production causes muscle and joint pain, memory loss, and overall loss of well-being. The next box here says lactic acid. That's this, I already explained that. If you eat too much sugar and your liver's not converting lactic acid out of the blood back to pyruvate because your body's toxic, your liver's not working well, you have fatty liver from drinking too much pop, then you end up doing this instead of all of this. And here it says heavy metals. They can block these uh, biochemical processes and chemical toxins. So picture this. You have uh, step A, B, C, D uh, biochemical pathway in your body. So it goes like this. A, B, C. And then you have a toxin right here. And you can't get to D. D is over here. A, B, C. And then there's a stop. So the idea for a long time was add nutrition. Nutrition, adding supplements good food, nutrition supplements, good food, and now you have enough nutrition to spill over the toxin, then you get the last step of that, process, of that biochemical pathway. So the better idea is remove the toxin, and then you have A, B, C, D, just like that. Here we have deuterium. Those are the red hydrogens right here. See the red dots all around here? Those red dots, those is called deuterium or heavy water. They break these ATP synthase nanomotors. They one heavy metal or uh, heavy water can get in there and stop the spinning at 9,000 rotations per minute, and then you just have a dead nanomotor and you don't make any ATP. So where do you get heavy water from? You get it from water. You get it from foods that are high in water. It just naturally occurs there. It's okay to have heavy water in your body in other locations. You don't want it inside the mitochondria. So the product from Cellcorp Biosciences that removes heavy water out of the body is called MitoATP. 
I gave a lecture once on Sir Hans Krebs. I already had his biography. This is 1932 to 1937. Those are the years it took for him to figure this cycle out. And the challenges that he went through to understand how your body was working, they already had this pretty well figured out. They had this figured out, and these guys were fighting with these guys, talking about how important their studies were for humanity. But they got to a point where they realized there was something in the middle, some kind of intermediate metabolism. And it was all on Sir Hans Krebs. If anybody's going to figure this out, it would be this guy at that moment in time. It's a fascinating story. These other physiologists, you know, they, they work for you. This is Otto Warburg. And this is the, the best historical nutrition book I've ever read by Sam Apple. Ravenous, Otto Warburg, The Nazis, and the Search for the Cancer Diet Connection. They knew by 1913 that the main cause of cancer is fructose. And the main um, nutrient or chemical, I should say, that perpetuates cancer is fructose. They knew that by 1913. And it was ignored because everybody loves sugar. And then here's Claude Bernard another physiologist, and Emil Fischer, he's the guy, he's a physiologist that figured out that fructose, you know, it clogs up the liver and it causes heart disease, metabolic syndrome, etc. But not that he knew that, but he knew that it was the main cause and continuation of cancer was fructose. Emil Fischer is kind of the father of laboratory nutrition. He figured out what is a starch, what is a protein? What's an amino acid? What's a carbohydrate? What's a sugar? And he described all this stuff and he used chemicals to in his lab to figure this stuff out. And there was one in very there was one in particular that was very dangerous, but nobody knew it. And by the time he was in his sixties, he was so sick he ended up committing suicide. That was nineteen nineteen. And I'm saying this because these guys worked for you. They did this, they figured this out so that you don't get sick. And that you know what to do to stay here and to avoid this and to lessen glycolysis. You know, this is where diabetes occurs right here. And, and to stay like energized, to keep your energy up, your electrons, your hydrogen. So there you go. That's the reason why this is one of my favorite posters. And the bottom line is you actually you do have some tools with this. You got ketosis here. And you got detoxing here. Here's the red font. These are toxins. And this is a very limited list right here. They've actually expanded this to fill up all the space. So detoxify, um, get in and out of ketosis, take in lots of hydrogen, lots of electrons. There's supplements for that. And then, of course, exercise, sunlight, organic fruits, uh, organic vegetables, <laughs> and, uh, or and organic meat. Okay, to close off, listen to my commercial. If you're a practitioner, go to PowerNutritionPractice.com. Look at my upcoming seminars. You can also go to CellCoreBiosciences.com and look at the seminars that they have there because I'm speaking for them also as we tour around the country. If you want to be a patient in my office, go to my website, TheNHCAA.com. You can either be a patient directly or not. You can join the 7-Step Online Blueprint for Optimal Health program. And uh, I, I have a lot of videos and I take you step by step how to improve your health. And also I give you the tools. You have access to the tools to do that. Okay, see you at the next video.